So my talk today was about how we improve outcomes in the curative treatment of anal cancer. This is a rare disease and the incidence is rising rapidly. And the standard of care is concurrent chemo radiation. So the first thing I said in my talk is unfortunately in 35 years, through clinical trials, we have actually failed to improve on the standard of care. And clearly there's an urgent need for us to improve outcomes. And I focused on two real key areas. One is actually optimizing the radiotherapy dose and the second is actually talking about trials that might improve outcomes by adding novel agents to radiotherapy. So if you think about radiotherapy dose first, we have clear evidence of a dose-response relationship. We've got data in early stage anal cancers that lower doses than we give today produce good outcomes, but we have no randomized clinical trial data. In the locally advanced uh, setting, we have evidence that many countries use much higher doses of radiotherapy but without any randomized data to suggest the benefit of dose escalation. And when we give high doses of radiotherapy, we'll increase long-term side effects. So to get that balance right requires some high quality studies. So I've been privileged to lead a national consortium in the UK of a clinical trial called PLATO, funded by Cancer Research UK and Stand Up to Cancer. And that involves three trials that is actually looking at optimizing the dose of radiotherapy in anal cancer. And two of them I'll just briefly talk about. ACT4 is in early stage anal cancer, where we randomize patients to 50.4 gray of chemo radiation to 41.4 gray in 23 fractions. Now in preparation for the talk, I did a Twitter poll and I actually asked people what doses they, they would use. Very unscientific, but actually it was very interesting that we saw that the vast majority of over 90% of investigators would actually give 50.4 gray and no one is confident to dose de-escalate. So this reinforces the fact that the clinical trial is really important to generate the evidence as to the safety and the benefits of lower doses of chemo radiotherapy. When it came to locally advanced disease, I did another Twitter poll, and interestingly, 25% of the respondents gave a higher dose than standard in the UK, and 25% gave an even higher dose. And very interestingly, these doses corresponded to the design of our ACT-5 trial, where we're testing standard dose with two dose escalation arms. So the study is open. We've recruited 225 patients so far, and we're very excited about the opportunity to actually influence the future treatment of anal cancer by getting the dose right. And the second thing I actually highlighted was the fact that there are some studies now looking at immunotherapy combined with chemo radiotherapy. Um, it's clear in this disease we don't know the best time to give the immunotherapy. It may be that we give it after completion of chemo radiation, and that's a study that's being done in the US at the moment. It's recruited 120 patients. And there's also an early phase study called Corinth that is actually going to start recruiting in the UK and some other international sites that is looking at using immunotherapy during and after chemo radiation. So in summary, there are two different strategies about how we actually improve outcomes getting the dose right or looking at novel agent radiotherapy combinations. We were really excited by the fact that we had a full auditorium. So in a rare disease, to have around 200 people there to talk about anal cancer clearly indicates that there is an interest of knowing the best treatment for patients. The thing that strikes me is that there's huge international variation in the way people are treated and the dose of radiotherapy that they receive. So hopefully the messages from today will actually give some hope that when we report the trial results, we'll be able to guide people about the best dose for the individual stage of the disease.